Hello everyone. Um, after watching the last uh, two videos, I realized there might be a couple things that might help you out that weren't either explicitly said or <clears throat> which that wasn't said at all. <laughs> uh, so um, I'm going to start with basically the same <clears throat> um, uh, what do you call it dictionary that I had last time, except I'm going to do some some new things and hopefully. Um, use them in kind of meaningful ways if it doesn't work out just you know understand you know try to understand what I'm doing because eventually you're gonna to have to be doing this on your um, on your projects and more importantly we're gonna talk this is gonna build and I think next week we're gonna have a um, video on dictionaries inside dictionaries so um, to get this kind of basis set uh, is very important. Now jumping into this, um, let's see here. Um, so this should look pretty familiar to you. It might have been slightly different, but um, if you want to update, that's fine. And we have three people in here, three owners, three uh, pets, and uh, since I kind of skipped over the for loops a little and went straight to the while, because that's what's in chapter seven, um, I decided uh, maybe I skipped too hastily. So I did something new here that you probably aren't used to. But since owners has um, two sets of information here, we're going to try to go and get information from both sets. Um, so there, when we set up our for statement, we're going to use a comma and have two temporary variables instead of the average one. Now, if you're trying to get to Diane, Bob, and Maria, that's not a big deal. They're easy to get to because they're keys. But when you have non-keyed stuff like the dog and the cat, um, they're a little harder to get to through the basic dictionary structure. So what you want to do here is type in the word items with the parentheses because that will allow you to um, get to every item inside that owners um, now now let's, uh, let's let's keep it simple at first so right I think I'll just do this I'm gonna hashtag these out I don't know if that's the right word we'll say uh, pound <laughs> pound this one out pound this one out. We're just going to try to keep it simple. Uh, sorry, I'm accidentally touching my touchpad, which is throwing major fits at me. Okay, as you can see, control. Let's try this one more time. <laughs> there we go. And we have the good indent there, we, uh, and we're going to skip over the if. So notice what this is going to write here. So it's going to say print O, and if in the old-fashioned way of doing the for loops, if we just discarded the P, O would be what's ever in these pieces of a list, right? Except this time we're going to do um, dictionary, so it's going to O really means the keys. So it's going to look at Diane, Bob, and Marie. And the reason why we have that second value is the P means that second part or what's next to it in the colon um, right here. And so when we write this, it should say that Diane has a dog. Um, and it's going to do this how many times? Well, as many times as there are an O. So in other words, we have one O, two O, and then 3O, so it should print out three times. So let's go ahead and start. And let's bring it over here. I'm going to make that a little larger because this is possible. I think we just loaded this up this week on this laptop. So I'm going to go to 28. And that's huge. Maybe a little smaller. <laughs> now let's do 24. There we go. So now you can see that Diane has a dog, Bob has a cat, Marie has a bunny. This extra line just merely is rewriting the owner. So the owner stills exist, um, 
But let's say a bunny isn't what we wanted to say. Let's say um, some people put bunny in when they typed in their, um, what do you call it, their pet. <laughs> I don't know why I can't think of that. Uh, their pet. Um, and then um, some people put rabbit. So we wanted to change them all to rabbits. So what I did here was introduce this if statement. So essentially, we say p is equal to bunny. Well, what is p? Well, if you remember from last time, it's the item that's associated with the keyword. So I am going to change it to rabbit. And originally, we, I did this in class earlier, um, and I didn't put, and I didn't put this part in. And look what happens. So you run it. Sorry, it's on the other screen, and. Bob has a cat, Diane has a dog, Marie has a rabbit, and then it says Bob, cat, dog, and then bunny again. So it puts the rabbit in for Marie, so it switch, switches out bunny and puts in rabbit. But when we go back to the um, owner's dictionary fully printed out, we get, uh, it, it turns back into bunny. And the reason being is because this is just a temporary variable. So if it does bunny first and then cat second and dog third, it bunny will be replaced by cat, then replaced by dog, let's say, if it, is, if it does it in this order. However, we don't want that. We don't want a temporary um, designation for p what we want is to take p and and change the actual owner's dictionary so if i go into the owner's dictionary i can find what's immediately associated with p because o and p are coupled up here um, and populate this uh, part of the dictionary or that item or that record in there and now the reason why this is, um, even though P and O are temporary, it's going to pop up Marie and Rabbit here, but owners is going to actually physically change. And once you change that dictionary, it doesn't matter whether you move on to a different O or P, it's already changed and it can't go back. So when I run this, sure enough, it says Marie has a rabbit, Bob has a cat, Diane has a dog, and then Marie, Rabbit, Cat, Dog. So everything works exactly the way we want it. Okay, so that's one or a couple things that I wanted to do with you. Um, let's do uh, one other thing here, or at least uh, one other thing inside the loop. So let's say um, we do uh, an L if. So this means that we are going to have an else, uh, but we want to put a statement in there. And as you can see, it's, it's getting a little mad at me because I haven't filled out the L if yet. So maybe I should do that first. So what I want to do here is say that if um, If, uh, let's see, O equals Bob, in this case, we, we know we have to be case sensitive, then tab, we're going to break. Now, this might be a word you're, you're not used to. Break means stop doing whatever you're doing. It's not going to kick you out of the program. However, it is going to kick you out of the loop. So if we're in a loop, it's going to break, and we're going to go out of the loop. Um, and then we're going to, we should go straight down to here. So it will skip this print statement as well. So let's give it a try. It's, you can see it's, it's bothered a little bit, because remember, we have to use the colon there. And now everybody's going to be happy, hopefully. Oh, and I need a double equal sign there because it is an it is an evaluation. And let's go ahead and hit start. 
and as you can see, it jumps straight to Bob and Cat. Um, that's one of the odd things about this is I'm going to just put this here. If it doesn't do anything, it, it should run, hopefully. Um, sometimes it doesn't like to run if there's nothing below the LF. But let's give it a shot. Yeah, okay. So let's put something in there. Like, say x is equal to 5 or something like that. And then, um, see, notice where it says Bob, Cat, uh, Diane, and Dog. For this one, um, a lot of times you're not 100% sure where you're going to start with the dictionary. You actually have to assign that state. We'll talk a little bit about that, I think, later on. But um, uh, dictionaries, can you can grab at them at any part. So since Bob was first, it broke out of that loop right away. So let's put Diane in there this time instead of Bob. And then bring back the break. And then as you can see, here we'll do another start. And it says that Bob has a cat. Marie has a rabbit. Bob has a cat. But when it reaches Diane, it breaks out. Because as you can see, when it spits this out um, in this statement, Diane is the third record that's displayed. So it, it can flip these things around on you. Um, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It just means a lot. It, it's not necessarily going to look at these things sequentially. Um, and sometimes it's good because it optimizes the search. So uh, you don't necessarily have to change that unless you really want to force an issue. Okay, so the last piece that I wanted to teach you here is this part is that sometimes when you take input, in fact, let's put an input here. Let's say that, oops, that if it's Diane, we'll say that um, uh, let's see. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to, I want to grab an input from you. So um, let's just say num of dogs. And you say is equal to input. It says how many dogs. Does O, nope, let's concatenate it. O, how many dogs does O have? Oops, put that in quotes too. And then put the parentheses on there. So now it's going to bring this in as uh, for num dogs. So if I start. And actually, let's take the break out of there. There's no reason to keep it in there anymore. So it's going to, um, and since it is a, uh, we're looking for dogs, why don't we go ahead and change this from the, the owner to the actual word dog. And hit start. And as you can see, Bob has a cat. How many dogs does Diane have? Maybe we should clean that up a little bit too. Um, uh, so I'm going to do a Control X, put it up here underneath. And as you can see, um, we need to tab all this. And I'm going to Control V that. Let's clean up some of the space as well. Uh, so, Diane has a dog. How many dogs does Diane have? Two. Marie has a dog, and so nothing crazy there, right? But we put the number two in, but we meant it as a number. So in other words, what happens if we were to do something with it? So we could say something like 
num dogs equals num dogs plus one. And then we can do just a simple print statement tab um, print. If if O gets another dog, they'll have Plus it P. They'll have num dogs. Parentheses. Now this looks kosher because we added one to the dogs. It's going to just say, um, you know, hopefully if they put two, we'll get three, right? But when you run this, we're going to have this problem. How many dogs does it have? Two, uh, and it gets an inch. It gets a um, a uh, error or a um, exception. There was an exception, and the um, the reason being is that it doesn't like this line. It's saying that you're trying to convert an int object to a string implicitly. So, what is the int and what is the string? Well, in this case, we know one is an int, right? And I'm going to stop it here. Um, one is an int. Um, so what are they talking about with the string? Well, it comes up here. When you do input um, this, it, it takes it as a string. That's the only way you can bring it in. But the good news is, is it's not a huge deal at this point because all we have to do is change num dogs into an integer and unlike formal codes that force you to use a data type right away Python does not. So in other words, you can call numdogs a um, string originally, but you can convert it and change numdogs data type to um, an integer, uh, which you can't do. Um, once, you're, once you declare something as an integer, it's always going to be an integer, but not so in Python because it's a little more flexible. So um, what we did here is we're just taking the word int Change num dogs converted num dogs into integers. Now we can add it to a one, which is also an integer, and num dogs will officially be an integer at this point. But it may cause us one more problem. So I'm going to put three. We get one more problem. See, because it says it, it converts int um, to string implicitly. Same exact error. Well, <laughs> Because numdogs has now become an integer, we have to turn it back into a string if we're going to put it in the output. So let's stop it and then rerun it. And now we're going to say two. Uh, if Diane gets another dog, they'll have three. Maybe we should have put a period on, and I didn't know how to use the. I didn't want to use she or he either. F3, so I guess maybe we should do a plus just to keep it safe. So um, that's basically what I wanted to cover as far as the extra stuff. Next week we'll go a little bit more in depth into dictionaries and then we'll start counting the new material. Okay, thank you, and we'll see you next week.